Hey y'all, I'm Dominique and I'm sitting here editing this video when I realized that I didn't make an intro for this vlog. So we're gonna get straight into it. <laughs> I'm gonna bring y'all along for a day in the life of a medical laboratory student. Right now I'm completing my clinical practicum. I'm currently rotating through chemistry, so this is a typical day. So when I come in at 7 a.m. I wipe down the bench area and then I begin the startup routine on the Cobus 8000. As you can see, maintenance mainly involves cleaning the probes. I just wanna make sure there's no buildup. So this is the ISC module that does sodium, potassium, and chloride testing. Next, I move on to the C module. I'm just gonna use alcohol pads to clean the probes. And I'd also move on to the E module next. I just don't <laughs> have a clip of it. It's the same thing, it's just cleaning the probes. So after I do all that, I'll dock what I did, and then I will check the reagent status to see what needs to be loaded or unloaded from the analyzers. So I go into the fridge to get any packs that will be needed for patient testing, and then it's a simple push to load them on one by one. I then order up QC on the analyzer so that I can move on to pouring up calibrations and control materials. Clinicals are definitely like a different experience than the skills lab. Like there's so much to learn when it comes to automation and troubleshooting these analyzers. Um, and it can only really be done in the clinical setting. Like the book can only teach you so much classroom can only teach you so much. So I'm really glad that I had the experience. So while QC is running, I do the daily task. So this is checking millipore readings and salt levels. I also document temperatures and humidity levels. Um, for this chemistry department, there's three fridges, two freezers, one room thermometer, and two analyzer thermometers. And then I'll document and record all that. Today, my opium reagent failed QC for both levels. So I checked expiration dates and lot numbers and then tried again, but it still failed. But I might have left it out too long and affected the stability, so I poured up fresh QC material and it passed that time, thank goodness. So we move on. Anyway, all of this is done before 10 a.m. This is around the time that the first batch of patient samples come in. My clinical site is a reference clinic, so it's a lot different than the hospital, but yeah. Them couriers be dropping full on tubs and buckets of specimens around the clock every few hours for the entire day. So after QC is validated and everything is good, I then start processing specimens. This involves checking them in, ordering the test if it needs it, and then pouring them up into a red top tube. From here, I'll centrifuge the tubes for five minutes and then I can load them on the analyzer and press start start and we in there that's it we got through the hardest part of the day being startup I usually don't really have time to study because there's always something to do in the lab so for example right now you see me reconstituting activators for shutdown which is done on the next shift usually I spend this time reconstituting new calibrators for the analyzers I didn't have to do that today so um, they let me reconstitute the activators for shutdown instead but yeah, the days go by so fast. Like, I really love it here. <laughs> Sitting here just eating some ice cream. I have been getting comments and messages from people that are not wanting to go to medical laboratory school because they see chemistry in the upper level classes. We're gonna talk about it because I honestly feel like it's a consensus. <laughs> that chemistry is annoying, especially gen chem. There's so much math involved and like, honestly, it, it is a struggle. And I get it, I get it, I understand. I hated it. I am here to clear up the difference between clinical chem and general chem. General chem is like a lot of periodic tables and thermodynamics, and gas laws and nuclear chem and electrochem and all that stuff. Like the only things I feel like I pulled from that <laughs> sequence course was basic lab stuff like pipetting and dilutions and mixing chemicals. So clinical chemistry is more like A and P, but it's very heavy on the pathophysiology so that we can understand like disease states of patients. But it's still chemistry, so it does involve like reactions and calculations and methodologies for testing, even though it's conveniently automated in the real world. <laughs> So I feel like if you like A and B, if you like anatomy and physiology, then this class could be exciting for you because it goes in depth 
on what happens when things go wrong in the body or when like homeostasis is taken off balance. I just feel like clinical chemistry is just like all the other med lab courses. They are heavy on science, but they focus on diagnostics because that's what we do. Like we help the doctor diagnose patients through analyzing the samples. Okay, so we're getting into the evening time now. I think a better way to spend the rest of my evening <laughs> productively is to get on Media Lab and do an exam simulation. So I started one up in chemistry and it's like a um, hundred questions and I'm halfway through it and I'm doing a little bit better than I thought I was gonna do. So hopefully that translates well when I take this final tomorrow. But um, let me tell you, Media Lab humbled me. It's funny though, like on Media Lab, there's a range of difficulty. Like it tells you the difficulty of the question after you answer it. It goes from like one to nine. The questions that I get correct are the harder difficulty questions. And the ones I'm getting wrong are supposed to be the easy questions. So I'm like, dang, what is going on? And so as I was thinking about it, I was I realized that I suck at memorizing. <laughs> I suck at it. And it translates into tests. And I, I feel like that is probably why I struggle so much with second guessing is because I don't know if I really memorize things correctly, especially when it comes to like some of these tests, uh, some of these math formulas. And I did not commit a lot of things to memory when I was taking clinical chemistry. So <laughs> it shows, <laughs> it really shows. Hey okay, y'all, so I'm heading out to my last day of clinical rotation for chemistry. And it's like five something, but I need to hurry up and get going before I'm late. <laughs> Cause I got an hour something drive and I taking my sweet little time this morning for whatever reason. So I'm gonna talk to y'all later. Okay, so I'm home. I'm out of my scrubs and everything. Today was my last day of clinicals for my chemistry rotation. And it's really bittersweet because like I really like the facility, I really like the people there. But I'm not gonna miss that damn commute. So I'm happy that I'm progressing through and I have another clinical rotation done. However, I'm not done with the semester. I did take my final yesterday. I have to do my senior capstone project and I have to still get together like all of my clinical paperwork to turn that in next week on campus. So I'm really not done, but I'm through the thick of it. I think what I'm gonna do for the rest of today, I might try to get on Media Lab again and do some more practice tests. I feel like that really did help me for my final for the practicum. What I'll just keep doing is just a lot of Media Lab questions versus trying to sit down and review every single topic in every single class. Like that just doesn't work for me. I end up doing like a very, very brief review that's not really helpful. So I think what will be more helpful for me is just to do practice questions. Right now, it's kind of just me getting through practicums. <laughs> like I'm not focused on my ASCP. I know it would make it a lot easier if I was, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm not. It's stress. So at this point, I'm just trying to make it through the clinical rotation because if I can't do that, I can't even get to the ASCP test anyway. So I'm focused more so on learning at clinicals because, and I learned a lot. I learned so much. So I think I'll get in that mindset probably in fall, which <laughs> I only have a two week break before I start fall semester. So that's like right around the corner. But I think when I say fall, I guess I mean October or November because I graduate in December. I think as soon as I know my date to take it, that's when I'm really gonna go ham and start studying on it. Which I, like I said, I know I shouldn't do that. I should start prepping now, but that's just my mindset at the moment. Like I, I just have to take it one milestone at a time. And the milestone for today is that I completed my chemistry rotation. So yes, we're gonna keep going. <laughs> and like I said, I finished the semester. I'm really just rambling, but um, I, I talked to text at the hospital and when they said that once you get to clinicals, it just fly by like that. I was like, whatever, <laughs> but it's the truth. I don't know, I, it seemed like this rotation went by really fast, but it felt like I was in hematology forever. I'll tell you my next rotation in my next video, if you care to watch. <laughs> Stay on the lookout, it'll probably come out next weekend. Oh, my battery is dying. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to comment down below and subscribe to my channel to keep up with my journey in medical laboratory school. Well, I got Biscoff cookie. And what'd you get? Vietnamese coffee oil. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, final.